So this tutorial is about Socrative, which is one of the most versatile uh, student feedback programs or apps that I've ever come across, certainly. Um, its main advantage is that you can t use it with any device that will connect to the internet. So, for instance, uh, you can do it on computers, you can do it on laptops, you can do it on iPads, but if students have their own mobile devices like phones, they can do it on there. You can either download it as an app for most mobile phones or for the iPad, for instance, or you can go straight to uh, the web and access it via a website. So if you search for Socrative on Google, this is the page that you'll come across, and you can see there's two versions there. There's the Socrative student and the Socrative teacher. Obviously, your students will go to the student one, and you yourself will go to the teacher one if you don't have the app already. Once your students go onto Socrative on the website or on the app, this is the screen that they will see in front of them. You will see here there is a, a room number area. The room number that they put in is an individual room number which is always associated with you as a teacher. And until they've joined that room, uh, in other words, you've told them the number of that room, they can't get any further. So this is the user interface that you would come across either on the website or if you had the app. Um, as you can see at the top here, we have the room number, which is, this one is allocated specifically to me for my quizzes. And you can also see a variety of other things. For instance, here we have the type of questions that we could do. We've got multiple choice questions. We've got true, false questions. We've got short answer questions. If you want to set a single question activity, for instance, as a starter or perhaps an exit ticket to a lesson, We've also got these ones here, which is your panel for actually starting um, different types of quizzes, like uh, the exit ticket. Space Race is quite a nice one. I'll let you discover that for yourselves. Um, but this is the most important one here because this is where we go to to actually create the quizzes themselves. So once I press on the button to uh, edit or create a quiz, this is the screen that will come up. As you see, I've got uh, lots of options there. I can create a brand new quiz, I can import a quiz, or I can select saved quizzes here, which I can in turn edit, duplicate, or delete. Um, here are uh, some previous quizzes that I've already done, and you can see that at any time I can download the report um, that, has, uh, that will give me the information on how well the students did. So it's always saved on the cloud. So the first thing I do is I click on the Create Quiz button, and this is the screen that I come up with. The first thing I have to do is name my quiz. Uh, so I'm, I've called this one Test Quiz 2. And as soon as I tick this little uh, button here, it's ready to be shared. Um, you can see that I've got two different types of questions that I could use, multiple choice questions or short answer questions. And you can actually... Um, change from one type of question to another in any given quiz. So I'm going to make uh, a quiz just by tapping on the um, multiple choice button. That brings up my first question here uh, which I've already written in for you just to show it and my question is how many chucks could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Um, and then in these areas here I write as many answers as I want to put in. So 1, 2, 5, 10, and this is hypothetical because woodchucks cannot chuck wood. As you can see here, I can indicate um, just by ticking the box which answer I want the quiz to regard as correct so that when the students take it, if they answer the one that I've ticked, it will automatically tell me that they've got it right. The next one I'm going to do will be a short answer one. So down here, my next question, I'll click that. And it moves on to question two and asks me to put the question in here. So I have decided to go for something a little bit more deep in terms of thinking. The first question obviously is very low down on Bloom's taxonomy. This one, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, how would it do it? You can put a little extra explanation in here if you wish to, uh, but you don't have to. 
these obviously there's no correct answer because otherwise the students would have to get the exact wording that you've used um, so what happens when you get your report is you can see exactly what they've written and you can judge based on that finally when you've put all the questions in that you need and there isn't a maximum number you tap save and the quiz is created for you you then get this little message there and it says you can share this quiz using SOC and it gives you a number to be honest I've never ever needed to do that I don't know why it puts it there but anyway you press continue which brings us back to the initial um, screen or the main screen if you go back all the way back to the main screen on the uh, start quiz press start quiz and it will bring you to this one here and here is a drop down menu that tells me all of the quizzes that I've created I select the one I want and I can either select it to be student paced so they go at their own pace or teacher paced in other words I control them after every single question and I stop them after every question notice there are some nice little options down here uh, I can randomize answer choices for instance instead of um, the multiple choice answers that I had before it can mix them up I can disable immediate right or wrong feedback and I can hide the question explanations if I like uh, I don't tend to use these but you can if you want to when I tap to run the quiz this is the screen that comes up in front of me as you can see here it says I've got no students in the room and this is my room number 2667 this is what I have to tell the students in order for them to log on this also will give me an idea that, of who has completed the quiz obviously there's nobody on there and if I tap this button it gives me live results as they're coming in for which students have completed which questions just to flip this around this is the view that the students would have on their console. As soon as you've started the activity, they will have to fill in the room number here, that would be 2667, and then they would have to press this button here to join the room. The first question they're asked is always for their name. You can do the first name, last name, in whatever order you want. It doesn't really matter. The purpose of it is so that you can recognise which student's given you what answers. They write their name, they then press submit here, and they start the quiz. So here is the first question that I set them. How many chucks could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? You've got the randomized answers here and the students will pick out whichever one of those they think is appropriate. And because I didn't disable it, the students at the moment can see straight away whether they got the answer correct or not. And then just move on to the next question at their own pace. Meanwhile, this is the view that I have. I can now see that there's one student in the room who has taken the quiz, and I can see that they have not yet completed it, but they're two-thirds of the way through. They've answered two out of the three questions, and they've got one out of one of the multiple-choice um, questions correct. At any time, I can end the activity here, but obviously I want them to finish it, so I'll let them do that first. The student he uh, screen here shows that they're on to the second question, so they here would have to type in uh, whatever the answer is. And then once it says, uh, once they've done that, they will have to press this button here to finish the quick quiz, or you can just swap and get another student to take the quiz on the same device, so it's no problem sharing the device. At this point, my screen tells me that Mike Woodchucker has completed three out of three of the questions. He's got one of, out of one of the multiple choice correctly, and I can press this button here to end the activity. Once I've ended the activity, I have this little screen here that comes up, which says, do I want to end it? Obviously, I do. And then it asks me how I want the report. Now, I can download the report if I'm on a computer, Easier to email the report to yourself if you are on um, a mobile device such as uh, an iPad or um, perhaps a mobile phone. Uh, that means that you can get this whenever you want. You can, of course, have no report or cancel. That's fine. One little uh, caveat here is I would use a non-school email address to receive the uh, emails to because uh, sometimes our school filter 
um, stops email reports from this address um, getting through instantaneously and obviously I want the results immediately. As soon as I've asked for the report uh, it sends it straight to my email address and it takes me back to the normal screen. So if I open up the email this is what we'll see. Straight away I can see over here uh, the names of the students so I can differentiate exactly who they are. Any questions are put in order in which they were asked along here and you can see that if any of them were um, multiple choice questions, if they got them correct then the answer comes up in green. If they got them incorrect then they, they would be in red and I'd be able to tell immediately visually who's got what wrong. The short answer questions here, I have their full answer so I can make a, a fairly detailed judgment of how well they've understood the material and then I've got a very short summary here of the number of correct answers out of the multiple choice ones. That's a really powerful thing both in the middle of a lesson or as an exit ticket for me to see exactly how well students have understood and then I can use that to start planning my next lesson to address any students who have misconceptions or to extend other students who clearly have it well and truly sussed. And I hope uh, that gives you something to work with on this great piece of software.